Hello friends, uh, uh, today in this uh, lecture we will going to discuss uh, Fredholm integral equation with the uh, separable or degenerate kernels. So, this is the topic of the uh, today's lecture. So, uh, just uh, recall some basic things that a equation an equation of the form alpha x y of x equal to f, uh, f of x plus lambda a to b k x t y t dt. This equation where uh, unknown function y x is also coming in under the sign of integration and outside this kind of integration is known as integral equation and if the limit is constant we say that it is a Fredholm integral equation. So, here uh, we are assuming that this alpha f and k are some given function and lambda a and b are some constant value and we call this equation 1 as Fredholm integral equation and this y x is a known function which we are going to find out and the given function k x t which depend upon the variable x and t is known as the kernel of the given integral equation. On the basis of this function alpha of x here we can categorize this integral equation into three kind first is when this alpha x is ideally uh, equal to 0 this equation 1 is known as Fredholm integral equation of the first kind. So, it means that here this term is simply vanished and we say that f x uh, plus lambda a to b k x t y t dt is equal to 0 we call this as Fredholm integral equation of first kind and if this alpha x is an ideally equal to 1 a constant value 1 then this is known as Fredholm integral equation of the second kind and if alpha is not a constant value but is a function of x then this integral equation is known as Fredholm integral equation of the third kind and in generally in practice we discuss only the first and second kind in generally very uh, in a very less uh, occasion we discuss the Fredholm integral equation of third kind. The reason we can say that if we can take alpha x uh, is positive or we can say uh, same sign without loss of generality we are assuming that alpha x is positive throughout the interval a of uh, a and b then you can take we can uh, simplify our integral equation which is convertible into uh, Fredholm integral equation of second kind. Uh, just look at here what we try to do here we have alpha of x y of x is equal to uh, f of x here plus uh, a to b is the limit k of x t and here we have y of t here. So, what we what we do here we since alpha x we are assuming that it is all the time positive for all x between this interval a to b then we can write it here as alpha x and y of x here we can divide by root of alpha x which we can do f x of root of alpha x here plus a to b and um, I can take inside because this integral uh, integration is with respect to t. So, under root alpha of x here and here I can divide by alpha of under root alpha t here and under root alpha t we can write it here y of t d of t. So, if you look at uh, uh, this is if we assume this as new variable y of x then it is given as y of x equal to f of x plus a to b k of x of t divided by root of alpha x root of alpha t here and this is y of t d of t. So, it means that if we assume that your alpha x is having the same sign or we can say without loss of generality that it is positive throughout the interval then uh, Fredholm integral equation of third kind is may be converted into Fredholm integral equation of the second kind. So, this is the reason why we discuss um, the Fredholm integral equation of the second kind in more of the discussion. So, now uh, let us consider uh, right now a very simple case of uh, kernel k x i. Uh, we take kernel k x i in this form that we take k x t here as um, separable or degenerate kernel. So, here we are considering this Fredholm integral equation of second kind when the kernel is given in separable or degenerate form. So, what is a separable or degenerate form? 
So we can simply say that a kernel kxt is called separable or degenerate if it can be expressed as summation of finitely many terms uh, which is written in terms of uh, pr uh, function of x into function of t here. So here I am assuming that kxt is given as here aix is a function of x only and bit is a function of t only and I am writing here kxt as uh, summation of these n terms i equal to 1 to n aix bit and here we can assume that all these aix are linearly independent in the same way we can say that all bit b1 t to bnt are linearly dependent. If it is not then we can reduce into uh, a lesser sum of the sim uh, similar kind of event. So, if we if we say that if these are not linearly independent so it means that one of these can be written in terms of other AIs. So, for example, if I assume that a1 to a n x are linearly dependent so it means one of a i a k s can be written as linear combination of other. So, we can reduce this sum to a lesser uh, say summation ok. So, uh, that is why we without loss of generality we are assuming that whatever present here is uh, representing the linearly independent function. So, here a, a 1 to a n s are linearly independent similarly b 1 to b n s are linearly independent. So, when we have this uh, separable kernel then how we can solve problem integral equation of the second kind. So, if you look at this with this kernel we have uh, the Fredholm integral equation of the second kind and in place of kxt now we are writing this summation i equal to 1 to n aix bit. Now this uh, integration with respect to t I can take this aix common and since it is finite sum we can take uh, we can interchange the summation and uh, integral sign. So, here we write a to b bit y of t dt. Now, if you look at this quantity is what a to b bit y t dt this quantity is going to be a constant value. So, if I denote this uh, constants as a c i then uh, we can write uh, substituting this c i as a to b b i t y t d t in this thing then our solution y x can be written as f of x plus lambda times this is c i c i into a i x. So, it means that in this particular case when kernel is given in separable form your solution is given in this form y of x equal to f of x plus lambda times i equal to 1 to n c i a i x. The only thing left here is to find out these constant c 1 to c n. So, how to find out uh, this uh, these constant uh, c 1 to c n. Uh, so, if we can find out we can get the solution. So, for this we uh, what we do we already know the form of the solution. You take this solution defined in this and put it back into your equation number 3. So, here you ok let me do it here. So, here we have solution y of x is equal to f of x plus lambda times summation. Uh, i equal to 1 to n and c i a i x simply. Now, we uh, and your equation is what y of x is equal to f of x plus lambda times uh, summation summation a i x uh, i equal to 1 to n here and this is integral a to b, b i t and y of t dt. Now, y of t you can evaluate from this and here we have c i is equal to a to b, b i t, y t dt. So, uh, what we do here we can write it y t dt as f of t plus lambda times summation i equal to 1 to n c i your um, a i t. We can put the value of y t as this and simplify. Now, here uh, when you simplify it will be 
reduce into this summation i equal to 1 to n e i x here I am uh, if you look at this here I am assuming a different uh, uh, dummy variable say k so that it should not so k is from 1 to n c k a k t. So if you use this uh, we have this summation i equal to 1 to n e i x into this quantity if you simplify you will get this. Uh, how we can get this let us look at here I am reading y x here as this f of x plus lambda times summation i equal to 1 to n uh, c i a i x here equal to f of x plus lambda times summation i equal to 1 to n a i x here a to b b i t here and in place of y t I am writing f of t plus lambda times since it is already inside so I cannot use the same so let us use k equal to 1 to n c k a k t and d of t and when you simplify this f x this will be cancelled out here your lambda will also simply gone and I can write it here that summation a i x i equal to 1 to n if you look at the coefficient of this coefficient of this is c i minus here I will get what I will get here uh, this quantity. So, let me write it here a to b b i t f of t here plus f of t dt here plus I am taking here. So, uh, uh, minus a to b b i t and summation here I will write it here summation k equal to 1 to n b i t and a k t d of t equal to 0. Uh, anything I have missed a i x I think is ok b i t a k t a k is it ok. So, we have uh, this thing and I can write it like this. So, uh, so this is a given here. Now, uh, a i and into this oh, this is written here. Now, here we are using the fact that these a i x are linearly independent. So, if they are linearly independent means the uh, coefficient of a i x uh, will be nothing but 0. So, here this equation c i this these are the coefficient here. So, this will equal to c i a to b b i t f t plus lambda times uh, summation c k a k t uh, d t is equal to 0 here and if we if we simplify this further by saying that a to b b i t f of t d t is denoted as f of i and a to b uh, b i t a k t d t a to b b i t a k t d t is equal to a i k then we can write down the simpler form of this uh, equation number 5 as this. So, here I can write it c i minus lambda times k equal to 1 to n a i k c k equal to f of i. So, what I am trying to do here uh, since uh, just I am just summarizing here since a i x are all linearly independent. So, this will be simply 0. So, this will be 0 means I am just writing it here uh, equal to 0 for all i equal to 1 to up to n is it ok. And this I am writing as b i t this I am writing as f i sorry this uh, this I am writing as f i t. So, let me uh, erase this I am writing this as f of i and this I am writing b i t a k t as uh, a i k. So, let me write it here this is I am writing here a i k. So, I can simplify this. So, here I can write it here c i 
minus summation uh, some lambda is missing here I think lambda is there some lambda is there so let me write it here uh, uh, lambda ck lambda ck is missing here this is lambda and ck here so uh, uh, let me write it ci uh, lambda ck and we have aik here and k is from 1 to n here is equal to f of n. So that is what is uh, written as equation number 7 here is it okay. So uh, now this is a simple algebraic equation which we can solve uh, by your uh, knowledge of linear algebra but here I just want to put one uh, uh, another way to find out this ci. If you look at uh, what we did here once we have a solution here we have put it back to 3 but rather than putting it back into 3 we can simply write it here look at this the uh, coefficient, uh, coefficient ci is given by ci equal to a to b b i t y t. So if you use y t which is given by this in y t I can write it y t equal to f of t plus lambda times i equal to 1 to n c i a i t if we put it back you will get what let me write it here these are your c i and I am writing a to b b i t and in place of f t I am writing what uh, sorry y t I am writing f of t plus lambda times summation k equal to 1 to n I am writing uh, k equal to 1 to n c k a k t and this is d t and if you simplify you will get what if you take it this a, uh, a to b b i t f of, uh, f of t as f of i so this is f i plus lambda times summation c k and b i t a k t we are denoting as a i k so this is a i k k is from 1 to n so here we get the same equation so c i equal to f i plus lambda times k equal to 1 to n c k a i k which is same as what we have already obtained here. So this is an alternative alternative way to find out the expression for uh, 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 obtain the equation for this c i s. Now we have once we have c i whether you obtain through uh, this equation number 3 or from the uh, values from the uh, coefficients. So here what we have seen here we can simplify uh, this system of linear equation into this part uh, d lambda c equal to f. So here your d lambda is i minus lambda a where uh, uh, a matrix is given by a i j and d lambda uh, and c is your c i and f is nothing but small f i basically we are writing in this particular format. So we are writing here say um, i minus okay so here we are writing here c i minus lambda summation uh, k equal to 1 to n c k a i k f of i uh, for every i equal to 1 to n. So if I write it for 1 so it is c 1 uh, minus lambda I will write it here c 1 a i uh, c 1 k c 1 1 let me write it here. some space. Hmm. So here I will write it for um, so i equal to 1 we have c 1 minus lambda c 1 a 1 1 minus lambda c 2 a 1 2 and so on and it is minus lambda c n a 1 n equal to f 1 and for i equal to 2 it is c 2 minus lambda c 1 a to 1 minus lambda c 2 a to 2 and so on minus lambda c n a to n equal to f 1 and in so on if we write it i equal to n it is c n minus lambda c 1 a n 1 
minus lambda c2 a n2 and so on minus lambda c n a n n equal to f of n. So, if you arrange this you will get here first we have 1 minus lambda a11 and here we can write it minus lambda a12 and minus lambda a1n and if you look at the second one it is uh, c1 is there so minus lambda a21 will be there and if you look at this this term it is 1 minus lambda a22 and so on minus lambda a2n and in this way we can write it here if you look at the last one it is what minus lambda a n 1 and it is what it is 1 minus lambda a n n and this is c 1 to c n and it is f 1 to f n which we are denoting as d lambda c equal to f. Now, here cases arises when we discuss the coefficient matrix d lambda and the uh, forcing term this f. Now, let us discuss cases here. So, this is the equation 9 I am representing here. Now, this f which is nothing but this um, a2 uh, uh, basically f is your f i t. Now, if the function f f x is ideally equal to 0 in this 2. So, what is 2 here? 2 is this. So, if I assume a homogeneous uh, freedom integral equation then in this case this uh, uh, f i if you look at equation number 6 a to b b i t f of t d t equal to f of i and if f of t is equal to 0 all your f i is going to be 0. So, in this case it this equation is reduced to d lambda c equal to 0. This is happening when we are assuming that f of x is r n equal to 0. So, when we take all uh, this f of x is equal to 0 or we can say that we are taking the homogeneous uh, federal integral equation then you can solve uh, our constant using this. Now, here we have two case arise that uh, determinant of d lambda is 0 and determinant of d lambda is non zero. So, in this particular case when we have determinant of d lambda is equal to uh, 0 then we have a uh, 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 non trivial solution and we in, in this case we can say that um, we have a non trivial solution and not only one solution we have infinitely many solution here. So, in this particular case when d lambda determinant of d lambda is equal to 0 here we have infinitely many solutions and if determinant of d lambda is non zero then we have a unique solution that is c equal to 0. So, it means that all c i is equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to n here and in this case your solution y of x is given by what your solution is already defined as this if you remember your solution is given by this formula y of x equal to f of x plus lambda times summation c i a i x i equal to 1 to n. So, in particular this case when determinant of d lambda is non zero all those c i is equal to 0 we have already assumed that f x equal to 0. So, in this particular case your y of x is nothing or nothing but 0 solution. So, this is a 0 solution for what? This is a 0 solution for homogeneous Frodon integral equation. So, this is a solution for what? This is a solution for this particular problem. Let me. So, here we have y of x equal to f of x is simply 0 here a to b k of x t and y of t dt lambda here. And here k x t is a uh, uh, degenerate or sep uh, separable kernel uh, i equal to 1 to n a i x and b i t. So, here uh, when determinant of d lambda is non zero we have a trivial solution for this homogeneous federal integral equation. 
Now, for this particular case, when d lambda is uh, determinant of d lambda is zero, we have a non-trivial solution. It means that there are some uh, uh, CIs which are non-zero, and with the help of this, your solution, you can write it here as. Let me write it. Uh, solution is basically what solution here. So here f x is zero, so we can write it y x plus equal to lambda times summation i equal to one to n, and we have um, some ci zero. So it means that in this case, when d lambda I, determinant of d lambda is equal to zero, your solution is given by this, and we have infinitely solution in this case. Okay. So now let us move to next case. Uh, next case is that uh, this is the, what we have discussed here that if d lambda is equal to 0 means uh, determinant of d lambda is equal to 0 then at least one of the c's can be assigned arbitrarily and the remaining c's can be accordingly determined or in this case we have infinite many solutions and those values for this d lambda is equal to 0 d lambda equal to 0 means your uh, uh, determinant of coefficient matrix is 0 those values of lambda are known as eigen values of this system. So, we call this as uh, lambda for which we have a uh, solution here. We say that these lambdas are eigen values of homogeneous integral equation and the corresponding non trivial solution uh, we call this as corresponding eigen functions. So, those values of lambda for which d lambda is 0 called as eigen values and the corresponding non trivial solutions are known as uh, eigen functions. It may happen that a eigen value may have more than one uh, independent uh, more than one independent uh, solutions non trivial solutions. So, in this case we may have corresponding to one uh, eigen value we may have more than one uh, eigen functions available to us. Now, let us consider the second case. The second case when we do not have this function f of x is not r and d equal to 0. When we do not have f x non uh, not r and d equal to 0, but in this case we may have two thing uh, uh, two cases. One case is that uh, if you look at f i t is basically what uh, sorry f i is basically what? f i is basically a to b b i t f t b i t d t. Now, it may happen that though, though your function f of x is not ideally equal to 0, but this f t is orthogonal to these b i t. It may happen that this f t is orthogonal to this b i. In this case also your f i is simply vanishing for all i equal to 1 to n. So, this may happen when f t is orthogonal to, to your b 1 t to b n t. In this case also your problem reduced to this t lambda c equal to 0. Right. So, again as we are discussing in as a previous case here also we have two uh, case arise when d lambda is 0 and d lambda non 0 right and in this case your f x is non 0 f x is non 0, but still uh, because of this property orthogonality we have again the homogeneous equation and if we have d lambda equal to 0 we have uh, more than one solution available. So, we can say infinite many solutions here. And solutions are given as y of x equal to f of x plus uh, let us let me write it here it is given by this particular formula this thing f x plus lambda times summation i equal to 1 to n c i a i x right. So, d lambda equal to 0 means there are more than one uh, solution uh, for c i's. So, it means that infinite many solutions of c i available. So, we have infinite many solutions available here and when we have d lambda uh, is not equal to 0 in this case we have only unique solution that is 
your c equal to 0 right and in this case your solution is will be y of x is nothing but f of x here right so if you compare these two cases when f x is equal to 0 and when f x is non zero but orthogonality condition is there then here your solution uh, is uh, in this particular case your solution is uh, y x is equal to lambda time summation c i a i x i equal to 1 to n. So, in this particular case your solution is not involving any function f of x, but here since f x is non zero solution is given in this form. So, here we have infinitely solutions and in this case when d lambda is non zero you have y x equal to f of x here and here we have only y x equal to 0 solution. Now, consider uh, one more case when f x is um, uh, non zero and this property is not true for all i equal to 1 to n. It means that it may happen that some of f i's are 0, but not all f i's are 0. In this case, uh, your equation will be what? In this case, it is d lambda c equal to your f, but here your f is not a 0 vector now. Now, again we have two condition d lambda is equal to 0 and d lambda non equal to 0. Now, when d lambda is not equal to 0, then here we have a unique solution that is c equal to d lambda inverse f. So, we have a unique solution and solution is given by again y of x is equal to f of x plus lambda times summation i equal to 1 to n c i a i x. So, c i you can find out uh, using this and you can put it here and you have a solution. Now, when we have d lambda equal to 0, then here we have a coefficient matrix which is a singular coefficient matrix and here f is a non-zero vector. It may happen that we ha do not have any solution at all. Here your um, uh, knowledge of solving linear integral uh, linear algebraic equation is very very important. If you know how to solve uh, ax equal to b, you can uh, solve this thing. So, it may happen that when d lambda is equal to 0, it may happen that there is no solution at all for this that you can check from the rank condition here. So, if rank of d lambda and rank of d lambda f are same, then we have a solution and in that case, uh, we have infinitely solution and if rank of d lambda and rank of d lambda f is not same then we have a no solution. So, here we have two condition no solution and infinitely solution. That depend on rank condition that uh, here no solution means rank of d lambda is same as rank of I hope this you have already seen d lambda f and if it is uh, non same then no solution if it is same then we have infinitely solution. So, here we have condition rank of d lambda is equal to rank of d lambda f. So, in this particular case we have infinite number solution here we have no solution. So, now we have discussed all uh, the cases I hope uh, we have considered all the cases ok. So, uh, in next lecture we will discuss uh, the example based on these, this theory is it ok. Thank you for being with us.